Good morning. Welcome to St. Vincent de Paul. We're so happy to see you, masks and all. Um, I don't typically canter this mass, so I thought what we would do is we'd go over the music that we're going to use for the psalm and a couple of the um, mass setting. They're both by Sarah Hart. They're very simple. The mass setting is very simple, so sing where you can. God honors our singing even behind a mask, so sing when you can. And so this is going to be the psalm today. So the words are, and I didn't tell George this, but the, jo the psalm is, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. So pretty simple. So here's how it goes. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Now it's your turn. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. One more time. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. You can't fool George. So that's the psalm. I'll take care of the, the verses so you don't have to do anything there. We're going to go over the holy, holy, which if you hear the holy, holy, this is pretty much what the mass setting sounds like. Pretty simple. The Gloria is similar, but just hang on where you can. So here's the holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The whole mass setting sounds like that, pretty simple. And then the Alleluia, which we should all sing, regardless of whether we know it or not. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. that again. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Thank you for letting me canter and hopefully your choir will return soon. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning, and welcome to St. Vincent de Paul Parish family. We're glad you're here to worship the Lord through the celebration of both his word and the Eucharist. The ushers will not be taking out the offertory today. Instead, there are baskets at each of the worship space exit doors for you to place your weekly offering, capital campaign pledge, and any other special collection envelopes. Please visit our website if you would like to begin making your offertory giving online. Our celebrant today is Father Mike Johns, assisted by Deacons Ronnie Hoyt and Sylvestre Duran. Please stand and let us glorify our Heavenly Father by singing, I Know My Redeemer Lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, the one who calls me home. I long to see God face to face, to see with my own eyes. I know that my Redeemer lives, that I shall rise again. I know that I know that I shall one day see the goodness of the Lord when God will wipe away our tears and death will be no more. I know. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With Good morning, everyone. Good morning, it's, well, it's wonderful to see uh, so many familiar faces. It's wonderful to, to see the church filling up, little by little, little by little. So uh, welcome uh, this morning to, to our parish as we begin the celebration of, of this Mass together. Uh, today, we celebrate the sixth Sunday. Uh, of Easter. We're still in the, in, in the time of resurrection. So as we begin this Mass, uh, let us pause for a moment and give thanks to the Lord that we can be here, that we can be here together to celebrate the, the joy of Easter, celebrate the joy of our Lord risen from the dead. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord's mercy as this water which he has created will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Sacred silence, holy ocean, Gentle water washing over me. Help me listen, Holy Spirit. Come and speak to me. God, my Father, Christ, my brother, Holy Spirit, sanctify me. Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Come and set me free. Sacred silence, holy ocean, gentle water, 
crashing over me. Help me listen, Holy Spirit, come and speak to me. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people. Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord. May we always hold, may we always hold to in what we do, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed or crippled were, people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, 
the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. So I mentioned at the beginning of Mass that uh, this Sunday is uh, number six. It's the sixth Sunday of uh, Easter. Uh, and the Easter season has eight Sundays altogether. Um, and so next Sunday is the, uh, we'll celebrate the ascension of Christ into heaven when he returns to, to the Father. And then the following Sunday, number eight, is the, the last Sunday of Easter, is Pentecost, uh, when the Holy Spirit descends on, on the apostles. Uh, so the Easter season begins, you know, of course, on Easter Sunday and goes all the way through to the celebration of, of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Uh, so beginning today and then uh, this next two weeks, the readings that we hear at Mass, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll begin to focus more directly on the Holy Spirit, who he is, uh, what he does, and, and how we can experience him. Uh, and and so, so part of that... Uh, is, is the gospel that we have today. Um, in the gospel today, Jesus says, uh, I will send you another advocate, the spirit of truth, and he will be with you. He will be with you. Uh, in fact, in, in, in the gospel of John, which is what we hear from today, uh, Jesus mentions the Holy Spirit five different times in, 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 in the gospels that we'll be hearing. Uh, the Holy Spirit will, uh, he, you know, he's called the advocate, uh, the counselor, and when he comes, he will remind you of everything uh, that, that, that I told you, Jesus says, uh, and he will, he will be with you so that when you speak, if you have to speak about me in front of other people, uh, if you have to be, be witnesses to me, he will put my words in your mouth. Now, I mention that because in, uh, in, in Catholic theology, uh, the Holy Spirit is traditionally uh, uh, given the name love. Uh, the Holy Spirit is, uh, just is love, especially in, in, in a very special way. And so the best way to, to talk about the Holy Spirit or to think about the Holy Spirit is that he, he is love. And I have here um, a, a book on the Trinity. Uh, we'll, the, the, we'll be celebrating Trinity Sunday the week after Pentecost, so three, three weeks from today. And this is a, a wonderful book. It's a, like an introduction to what the Trinity is, but, but it has a, a quote here that I'd like to read about, about love, about the Holy Spirit. It says this, uh, whenever we love someone, our beloved is engraved in our heart like a weight of love that pushes us and draws us to our beloved. Thus, at the point of departure of the act of love, an imprint of the good that we love is engraved in our will. This imprint is a principle of impulsion towards the good loved. It pushes our will towards this good. Now, think of, um, you know, well, first of all, whenever we love someone, the, the person that we loved becomes engraved on our heart. I think that's a beautiful image. Uh, you know, think of, uh, think of a newly engaged couple or, or a newly married couple. Uh, you know, it's sort of like their, their whole lives, their whole minds and imaginations are caught up with one another and, and, and to where it, it really is like they are engraved on each other's hearts. Or, or think of the birth of a, of a child. With the moment you see that, that newborn baby, that, that your life becomes changed in a, in a definitive way because a, a new person now is not just a part of your life, but, but they become a part of your heart, you know? So that whenever we love another person, the love of friendship, the love of spouses, uh, the love of parents for their, ch for their children, it changes us. That there's, it's sort of like we become stamped by each other. 
Now, that's a way to understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like the stamp or the engraving on the heart of God. He is that love. And in God, just because of the way things work in the Trinity, whatever, uh, the, the, whatever is, is you know, stamped or engraved on the heart is a divine person. And so the Holy Spirit is what, it, 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 it's what changes our hearts. It's what changes, uh, uh, changes our lives in such a way that, that we, it's like we can't ever really be the same person. Um, you know, it's also a part of, of Catholic theology that a human person imitates God in, in two main ways. You know, we are made in the image of, and likeness of God, and, and that is in two main ways. First of all, because we can know things, we can know the truth with our minds, but then also, and maybe most especially, because we can love. So you and I imitate God because we can know and because we love. Now, it's one thing to know something. You know, think of, um, think of a couple that uh, has maybe just met for the very first time, and they're going to eventually fall in love and get married. They know that the other person exists. They know that, you know. Uh, they know that it just in, in their minds. Uh, but but that, hasn't, that knowledge hasn't yet changed their lives. It, th- they haven't been stamped by each other. You know, they haven't been smitten by love. Their lives haven't been changed uh, to where uh, they can't exist without each other. That, you know, that will happen, and, and that does happen, but it hasn't happened yet because uh, it, it's sort of like it's just head knowledge, so to speak, you know? So they know that the other person exists, but it's when we begin to love that, that the, the, the person that we know about, the person that we kind of know mentally, takes on a whole other way of existing. It becomes much more important. It's one thing to know what Jesus tells us. It's one thing to know uh, that what Jesus says is true. You know, um, it's one thing to know that we should read Scripture, or that we should come to Mass, or that we should do certain things, or, or that we should not do certain things. You know, and, and we all know that. But it's only when the Holy Spirit comes to us, the the love of God, the love. Uh, that, that becomes a, a divine person, the stamp of God. When that becomes engraved in our hearts, then all of a sudden it's like everything makes more sense. Then it becomes, you know, now it's not just a matter of understanding what I should or should not do, or, okay, yes, I believe the things that Jesus says. Now, uh, you know, it, it, it's, we become fired with love, unstoppable. And, and a person who is on fire with love of God, you know, there, it's, it's almost like there's no holding them back. And that person, it, it just, you know, think of, you know, if you've ever been in the presence of someone who just radiates the love of God, there's something contagious about that. There's something attractive about that. Uh, you know, somebody can get up and, and, and talk all day long about what Jesus said, who he was, what he did, but until it becomes real for us in our hearts, it, it's sort of like it just remains words on a page. And it's the Holy Spirit that, that takes that and stamps our hearts so that we really become different. We, we become people who now are drawn into who, what it means uh, uh, to be a disciple of Christ. Now, the Holy Spirit, um, because he is God, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't give us or he doesn't teach us anything apart from Christ. And so it's sort of like the love that he that he gives us, the love that, that, that is poured into our hearts, just redirects us to what the Lord has already taught us, to what the Lord has, has, has already reminded us, what he has already given us. And so um, yeah, there's, you know, one of the, sometimes we say, well, we have head knowledge and heart knowledge, and I might know something with my mind, but my heart's not quite in it, you know. And that's one way to talk about what a sin is. We know we shouldn't do something, but we really want to. When there's sort of that disconnect, the Holy Spirit helps to kind of close that disconnect. Now, what we know is the same thing that we love. And what we love is the same thing that we know, the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit redirects us to him. Listen again to the words of of Jesus in the gospel. If you love me, 
he says, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. Let us stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And life of the world to come. In the strength and love of the Holy Spirit poured into our hearts, we lift to the Father our needs and petitions. For the hope of renewal in the church throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom and courage for all leaders as they struggle to find the best path during these challenging days, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For patience, generosity, and a sense of community responsibility among all those who have been asked to shelter in place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students ending their school year at home, for teachers working remotely, and for parents and families supporting and working with their school-aged children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose lives are at risk because of their service to others during this time of pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed, especially Donna Marie Bolton, Father James P. West, and Alejandro Sanchez Delgado be with our Savior in paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially those affected with COVID-19, for our private intentions, and for all those written in the book of prayers, we pray to the Lord. We also give thanks for all graduates. We pray for them as, um, as uh, they finish up their, uh, the, the school semester. Um, maybe they weren't able to graduate uh, as they'd hoped, but we give thanks uh, for the presence of the Lord in their lives, and we ask that he continue to lead and guide them as they begin a new path, a new journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, in the strength that comes from the Holy Spirit, we lift up to you these, our needs and petitions, with confidence, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Although in God's love, my Lord. 
say my grace is enough for you my grace is enough for you for the sake of Christ I willingly accept my weakness Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body of and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us. Free. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy. Just a brief reminder uh, about communion. Uh, well, just remember, we'll have um, one line down each aisle, so just when you get in line, make sure that, or try to stand on an X, that way we're, we're six feet apart. 
Uh, when you come up to receive communion, just uh, simply come forward, uh, lower your mask, and extend your hands to receive communion. And then after you've uh, consumed the host, just replace your mask. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. God of love, your gift of peace is planted deep within our hearts. Make me an instrument of your peace. Make me an instrument of your peace. God of peace, wherever there is hatred, lay me bring.
Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Some announcements this morning. Hello, my name is Diana, and these are today's announcements. <clears throat> We will be making a change <clears throat> excuse me, to our mass schedule beginning next weekend. On Saturday, May 23rd, we will go back to the 5 o'clock p.m. mass in English. On Sunday, May 24th, 
There will be Mass at 10 o'clock a.m. in English, 12 noon in Spanish, and 7.30 p.m. in Spanish. Monsignor David, Father Mike, Father Rodolph, and the staff here at St. Vincent de Paul have written a letter to all parishioners welcoming you back to the reopening of our faith community to the public. This letter includes information such as our weekend and daily Mass schedules, confessions, and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament times, information regarding the reopening, the parish offices to the public, the plans for the celebration of First Communions, Confirmation, the initiation of RCIA candidates and catechumens, baptisms, weddings, quince, I can't pronounce that. Quinceañeras. Okay, and much more. This letter also gives some general direction and timing for the registration process for the fall religious education programs and other ministry activity. This letter can be found on our website and our Facebook page. For the time being, we will not have paper bulletins available to pick up. Instead, you can view the bulletin on our website, or you can sign up on our website to have the bulletin emailed directly to you each week. There are baskets at each of the worship space exit doors for you to place your weekly offering, capital campaign pledge, and any other special collection envelopes. Please visit our website if you would like to begin making your offertory giving online. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then also just remember that uh, the ushers will dismiss us as we leave the church. They'll go pew by pew. Um, all the doors of the church are open, so you can, just, as soon as you're dismissed, you can leave any, by any exit uh, that you choose. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Bow, Bow down. down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Let there be peace under.